It's another day in hackerspaces, uh, Mitch. <laughs> yeah. I like working around uh, geeks who are working with their own things they, they think are cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I've been working on this as I've had time. And after our CAS Congress, I really I set aside um, a week here in Berlin so I have time to work on my own project. Berlin's just a way really cool uh, place. I, I come here a lot. Uh, the place we're in now is Fab Lab Berlin. It's just one of many really cool places where people come together in community and support each other and doing things that I think are really amazing. So, uh, you know, here people are making things with, you know, physical things, but people also make music and art of all sorts. It's just a really play, a good place for communities to come. Okay, so community, community is important? I think so. Uh, it's really important to me, but I think it's really important just for people in general because, uh, you know, we, we kind of evolved supporting each other. We're, uh, we're not the kind of creatures that survive on our own because we're big and strong. Uh, we survive because we get together with other people and support each other. We still really need it for feeling like we're part of something bigger than ourselves, which is important for feeling like we're like alive, fully alive. So this is the music synthesizer I'm working on now. And, uh, it's uh, a board with, this is, um, you know, this part right here is Arduino, and uh, here's a amplifier, just a sound amplifier, and keyboard shaped pads, you can play music on it, and you know, a couple knobs to twiddle and make noise, and uh, yeah, so this, this is the project I'm working on. Arduino library that I'm working on now, that's what I'm really focusing on the last few days, is doing the firmware, the Arduino sketch and sketches that people can use. The Arduino is not very powerful of a microcontroller, no. so you can download the, the modules that you want to play with and then reprogram it every time you want to do it. But it can actually be used as performance. What is the official name? Is there already a name? Or? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but I think uh, our Ardu Touch Synthesizer, maybe, because it's a touch keyboard and it's Arduino. So, uh, yeah, I'll be um, uh, a hacker in residence at the University of Illinois in uh, March, April. Uh, for a month, and there I'll be uh, teaching people, having workshops and uh, discussions and all sorts of things with people who are interested there. Uh, a lot of people are into learning about how to solder, so we'll make this. And for people who want to learn more about creating music synthesis, uh, we'll be having workshops on that as well. And you're traveling the world, visiting hackerspaces. Yeah, I do that. What, what a fantastic <laughs> life you must have. I think it's great. That's why I do it. Uh, you know, I, I, I started off my life being totally depressed for the first half, and um, I, uh, through a lot of work on my own and a lot of luck, learned to live a life I really love. And um, so by this time in my life, I really do things because I love it. What was the turning point for you? What, what at some point said you said, okay, this needs to change for me? You know, uh, when I was a little kid, I just thought uh, all I have to do is endure through several decades and then I'll be dead. That's a way to live, but there's probably better ways to live, and I somehow knew that. Um, eventually, I got just super tired of being depressed all the time, and uh, you know, I was, I was really bullied. My parents didn't really help a lot. Teachers didn't. They often watched as I was bullied. Uh, it was pretty rough as, as a kid, um, but I, I somehow knew that life could be better. And uh, but you know, all the time up until this like turning point, uh, I just did what I thought other people wanted of me. You know, just like it's really cold outside, it's minus five degrees out, and I'm getting really tired of being cold all the time, you know, but uh, what, what can I do about that? But for my own life, I actually could do something. Okay. So I made a choice for myself for the first time, and for me, that choice was quitting television <laughs> and being addicted to things. It, it just, it, they all give you something positive. Um, uh, you know, like diverting attention, they're entertaining, it can be funny, it can be fun, um, but it takes away as well. And it created for me uh, a life that I, well, didn't really want to continue okay. living. I could okay. make a life that was better, and so I decided I could quit television. And I did, and uh, I went cold turkey, you know, quit just, I <laughs> put all my TVs on the curb, because I had a lot, I was a geek, I fixed them up, I had walls of the things. Um, I got rid of them all, and, uh, and then suddenly I had lots of time, <laughs> lots of time, and it was horrible. But only at first, because then I could actually do things with that time. A lot of people know you. 
um, due to your product, TV Be Gone. Mm. You know, that was also in line with just quitting television, but you're also quitting television for others, uh, it seems, you know, just... <laughs> Well, I give people a tool to consider the possibility. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, I have a question for you because, you know, I think a lot of people just browsing on the World Wide Web can be just as, you know, addicted to it as you were to television. Will there be a sort of an internet begun or, you know, is there, shouldn't be there something like that? You know, TV is kind of different than internet in a, a pretty big respect. Um, internet people can um, sit in front of a screen for hours and hours and hours go away, that'll never come back, uh, but it doesn't impinge on everyone around them. You know, if you have a TV at home or internet at home, um, it's not really impinging on other people, it's not impinging on the environment for everyone in that space, but when the TV's in a public space, then that TV is making choices for everyone in that space. And the TV industry made it really easy for me to turn those things off. Because if you can see a TV, you can send a remote control signal to it to turn it off. So I did for every TV. And that's what TV Be Gone is. TV Be Gone is a ready-made version. Uh, it's a keychain. Actually, I always have it with me. TV Be Gone. It's just got a button. You push it. The little red light tells you it's working. But this thingy sends out signals to turn TVs off. And. Um, yeah, so, but I also have a version that's a kit, one of the many kits that I make for teaching total beginners who've never made anything how to solder and make cool things with electronics. So uh, is, is, is this is also how, you know, hackerspaces help local communities? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So in a hackerspace, it's uh, like what we're in right now, Fab Lab Berlin, uh, it's a place where there's people forming community and s helping one another, sharing what they know with other people to help them do whatever projects they're exploring better. And uh, those other people are sharing what they know. And this forms a pretty strong community where people are encouraging each other to continue to explore and do things they find meaning in doing, things they really love. And when they do that, what we're finding in hackerspaces around the world is that uh, if, if people are coming up with cool projects that they love, other people love it too. And in a hackerspace, there's this community and people are just suddenly all, everyone there is excited about it, or a lot of people, then they're uh, maybe finding an opportunity for a startup. And if that's happening, then uh, you know maybe they can make a living doing what they love. I always ask people to to give their favorite um, you know tool or trick or tip. But mm. of course, I must ask you, what is your favorite hack? Favorite hack? Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I think uh, more in the abstract when I uh, think of questions like that. So, you know, I hacked my own life, and I, I, by hacking my life, I grew from being a total depressed blob of a kid to being someone who loves living my life. And I did that by, um, you know, hacking my, my life, my psychology, who I am, by making choices, um, you know, for myself for the first time and seeing that it had a huge impact on me huge impact, um, you know, making Quentin TV suddenly had time and suddenly I had to deal with all these things that I'd been pushing away, um, and that's what addiction is all about, pushing stuff away, but I had all this time, now I actually had to deal with it, and I found huge impacts every time I made a choice, and I was really terrible at making choices, but I learned continually from making choices, dealing with the consequences, knowing a lot more, and making new choices, seeing the consequences of those, et cetera, et cetera, and over a number of years, actually getting sort of okay at doing this, sort of okay at making choices that would actually do something more positive than negative, and um, yeah, and I can't say I'm an expert at that now, but you know, I continue to live a life I love, and I continue to get enough doing what I love to keep doing what I love. And as long as that keeps happening, I'm going to uh, keep loving my life. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mitch. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah.